lesson on angled forces in application of the second law of motion in a unit on classical Newtonian force analysis. I've chosen a couple of problems to exemplify applying Newton's second law in two dimensions, which requires decomposing any forces in a problem. And I will follow the fourth step force analysis strategy so that there is a clear strategy for solving the problem and how to move through the problem and identify different quantities and set up equations. And the biggest feature of this is the free body diagram, drawing the free body diagram. The free body diagram is a tool used once to assign a coordinate system and decompose forces. We can use that to help us set up the equations in two dimensions in applying Newton's second law and then identify knowns and unknown quantities and solve from there. We will also reflect on the answer and any special features of the problem solving strategy to take note of. The first problem I've chosen is string at an angle. The problem says a 15 kilogram block is being pulled on a frictionless surface. Okay, so frictionless surface by a string, so there's a tension. The tension in the string is measured to be 66 newtons and the string is making at an angle of 30 de degrees above the horizontal. Okay, so there's a lot of information there and I'm gonna start um, writing down information and get a general sketch going so that I can kind of encode it and sort it out. Um, they tell me a mass. 15 kilograms. Uh, they tell me that there's no friction and that there is a box being pulled along a surface by the tension. And I'm going to make the tension go off in this direction. And they tell me that the string is making an angle of 30 degrees above the horizontal. And so here's this horizontal and here's 30 degrees above the horizontal. So that's the tension. There's no friction, so I'll write mu equals zero down here with the surface. There's no friction with the surface. And this is the mass m. Did I get all the information? It seems like I did. It says, what is the acceleration of the block? I don't know the acceleration of the block. Okay, but um, I have a free body diagram to draw and a Newton's second law equation to set up and that would relate the forces together for me to be able to solve the problem. All right, so I'll put the free body diagram right here and there's three forces here, very simply three forces. Of course there's the tension and I'm gonna draw it a little bit bigger because I need to do some trig on it. So there's the tension. I can also make note that there's a normal force uh, which I will call N and there is a weight, which I will call W. Of course, W equals mg if I wanted to calculate it. T is given to me as a value, 66 newtons. And the normal force, I don't know yet, but I could calculate. Uh, it is in the y direction. So I'm going to go ahead and assign a coordinate system here. With And I anticipate it, because the tension's pulling in that direction, the acceleration will be to the right. And so I can assign positive x to the right and positive y upward. And when I look at this coordinate system, now that I have it assigned, the normal force is aligned along the y-axis. The weight is aligned along the y-axis. And the tension is at an angle in this coordinate system. So what I need to do in order to do force analysis in two different dimensions is divide this tension up into an x component and a y component through vector decomposition with trig. And I'm going to label this tx and ty to represent the x component and the y component. And the 30 degree angle is here. And I can do this over here. If I divide t into the two separate components, and you can use trig on this, tx is the adjacent leg. TY is the opposite leg. So we can use cosine and sine accordingly in order to find those values. For instance, sine 30 equals opposite over adjacent or opposite over hypotenuse. So we have TY over T. TY over T. So if I solve that equation for TY, I get T times sine 30. T is a value that I could plug in and I could calculate this, but I'm going to leave it like this for now. And similarly, I know that cos 30 can relate Tx to the value T such that Tx equals T 
cosine 30. And I like to do this, make the bigger picture a little bit bigger so that I can see the trigonometry going on here. Now that I have my coordinate system assigned and I decompose the forces into the x and y directions, I can now apply Newton's second law in the x direction and in the y direction. So it says, what is the acceleration of the block? The acceleration of the block will be in the x direction. So for part A, I will sum the forces in the x direction and set that equal to max. There's the acceleration. It's in the x direction. I don't know what it is. So on this side of the equation are all the forces in the x direction. And when I look at this free body diagram, the only force in the x direction that I see is the tension in the x direction. The tension has a component in the x direction. And that will equal ma. So I will set t cosine 30 equal to ma. I will solve for a. a equals t cos 30 over m. I know the values for t, 66, cosine 30, and for m. m is 15. And when I pr plug this through the calculator, I get 3.8105 meters per second squared. Pretty straightforward. There's only one force in the x direction, and that's the force causing the acceleration, and uh, just the component of it. Okay, so that solved part A. It says, is the normal force equal to the weight in this situation? Well, the normal force is in the y direction, so let's do a force analysis in the y direction. So part B, the sum of forces in the y direction equals MAY. I'm going to note that it's not moving along the vertical axis here, so this side of the equation becomes zero. In the y direction, though, I have several forces going on. Notice that there is the normal force up and also ty up. There's a component of the tension upward and there's a weight downward. And I like to put the positive forces first and the negative forces after that. And remember, these are all the forces from the free body diagram. So I get all the forces in there and I'm going to isolate it. It says, what's the normal force? So I'm going to isolate this equation for the normal force on one side. So it equals the weight minus the y component of the tension, which is T sine 30 in here. And it says, does the normal force equal the weight in this situation? And what we see is that the normal force does not always just equal the weight. In this situation, the normal force is getting help from the y component of this tension to counterbalance the weight so that the normal force doesn't need to be as big as the weight. It can be less than it because it's getting this help from the y component of the tension. So the normal force is less than the weight in this situation. The last one says, how does your answer change if the angle is instead below the horizontal? So. Uh, when I look at this, they're saying instead of T being upward, it would be directed downward. And I'm going to draw that this way. And when I think about that, the Tx would be the same value because it's the adjacent leg. It's the still, still the same component in the x direction. But instead of pointing upward, that y component would point downward. How it affects my calculation? Well, it doesn't affect the x direction because the t value stays the same, the angle stays the same, so the acceleration would stay the same. But when I look at this new situation for the normal force, now the ty is in the other direction. It would be n minus ty minus w equals 0, such that the normal force would equal the weight plus the y component of the the tension. The normal force would be the only force upward. This force and this new Ty downward would um, counterbalance it downward. And so it becomes larger than the normal force in this situation. The normal force becomes larger than the weight in this situation. 
The second problem I picked is a nice static situation that allows us to see how to coordinate two equations and two unknowns in order to solve values. And there's a couple of angles going on in here, so we need to keep track of different trig functions. The problem says two cables support a 7.5 kilogram sign from above. One cable makes an angle of 40 degrees with the horizontal and the other makes an angle of 20 degrees with the horizontal. Assume all forces act on the center of mass. Okay, there's a sign. Let me get a, a, a picture going here. It says two cables are uh, supporting a sign from above. So here's a sign and it says two cables are supporting it from above. There's one that makes a 40 degree angle, which is a kind of big angle, and the other one makes a smaller angle at 20 degrees. So I have those in my picture here, and I can label them, but what I'm gonna do is call this theta one and this theta two. So that theta one and theta two can be generalized for any situation. I'll write this over here, theta one equals 40 degrees and theta two equals 20 degrees. There's also a mass going on and I can write that uh, on here, m equals 7.5 kilograms and this has implications for the free body diagram where there will be a weight force. I can note that each of the cables is going to have a tension in it so there's tension 1 and tension 2 and that's actually what I'm asked to find in this problem or what are the two tensions. And I'm going to note that this is a two-dimensional problem. I have two unknowns, so I anticipate two equations to come out so I can solve algebraically. Now that I have a general situation sketch going on, I'm going to draw the free body diagram. So there's the mass, and I'm going to have three forces. Of course, like I mentioned, there's going to be the weight. There's going to be the tension T1, and I'm making it large so I can decompose forces as I need. And there's a tension T2. Okay, so if I decompose these, I can note that there's a T1x and a T2x and a T1y and a T2y. So I'm going to label these on here in different colors and I'm also going to write down their values with the trig functions just to set myself up to do the Newton second law equations right this is decompose forces as needed t2x all right and this is theta 1 or this is theta 2 over on this side and this is theta 1 on this side theta 1 I can note that t1x is the adjacent leg which suggests cosine for this one and I will divide it up so um, T1 can div be divided up into T1x equals T1 cosine theta 1. T2, T1y will thus be the opposite leg. It's opposite the um, angle and so that is opposite over hypotenuse is sine. So sine theta 1, T1 sine theta 1. I'll do the same for T2. And I'm going to note that uh, T1x is in the negative direction. That'll be important when we put together equations. So T2x equals T2 cosine theta 2. T2y equals T2 sine theta 2. Okay, so I have those decomposed, and I'm ready to go for my Newton's second law just to finalize, I do need to assign a coordinate system so I know which way is positive and negative. But I suggested that. The T1x is going to be a negative value. So let's do the x direction. The sum of forces in the x direction has to equal mAx. It's not accelerating in the x direction, so I'm just going to put 0 there. Over on this side of the equation, I'm going to put all the forces on the free body diagram. Uh, and I can see the positive value is going to be T2x. T1x is in the negative direction, and that is the equation of Newton's second law in the x direction for this problem. When I move, do some algebra on this and plug in what I know about the different values, uh, T2x is T2 cos theta 2, and that has to equal T1 
cos theta 1. And you may have already gotten that looking at the picture. These two are the only forces in the x direction, so they have to be equal to one another. And I'm going to note that T2 and T1 are my unknowns. Theta 1 and theta 2 are known, and I can get maybe a ratio to do a substitution. I'm going to write out this Newton's second law in the y direction over here. Um, a y and I'm going to note in the y direction it's still a stationary sign so in the y direction there's no acceleration. In the y direction I can write out all the forces that are vertically aligned and I'm going to see that there's two pointing upward T1y and T2y and one pointing downward which is the weight. So I'm going to put that in here T1y plus T2y minus the weight has to equal zero. Okay. So, uh, let me plug in what I know. T1y is T1 sine theta 1 plus T2 sine theta 2, that's T2y. And I'm going to say that equals mg. I'm just going to move that over to the other side. I know mass and I know gravity, so that's a value I know. And there's T1 and T2 in this equation. What I'm going to do is now I've applied Newton's laws and I am just have algebra left. I didn't need to necessarily plug in numbers until this point, and I'm going to continue doing algebra in symbols in order to isolate one of the values. Uh, what I'm going to do is solve for t2 in this situation. I can say that, or I'll solve for t1. t1 equals t2 cosine theta 2 over cosine theta 1. I just divide by theta 1 on both sides and I get T1 by itself. And now wherever I see T1 in this equation, I'll just plug in this expression. So I get T2 cos theta 2 sine theta 1 over cos theta 1. And you may note right away that we're going to have a tangent right here. So that's that term. This term becomes all of this term plus T2 sine theta 2 equals mg. I'm going to keep simplifying. I'm going to note that the T2 can get factored out. T2 comes out of both those terms. This simplifies to cos theta 2 tan theta 1 plus sine theta 2, and that all equals mg. So I can solve for T2, and I'm going to plug in what I know about values when I get this written out, mg over all of this stuff. I'm going to write stuff here. So I would write m, which is 7.5, times 9.8. And then I'm going to divide by uh, plugging in the angles in here. Cosine theta 2 is 20. And I need tangent of theta 1, which is 40. And then I'm going to add on sine of theta 2, which is 20. When I plug this all through the calculator, and I'll move this up a little bit so you can see it, T2 equals, when you run this through the calculator, 65.014567 newtons. And you could round it off probably to 65 newtons. It's about 65 newtons over in this um, cable here with the 20 degree angle. Now that I know T2, I can take it and plug it back into the equation that I used to plug in for T1. I would just plug that in there. So I get 65 cosine 20 over cosine 40. When you run this through the calculator, pretty quick calculation, you get 79.752173 newtons. You could round it probably to 80 newtons in there. So those are the tensions in each cable. Overall, notice that I wrote out what I knew and didn't know. I drew a general sketch just to make sure that I knew what was going on in the problem. I always draw a free body diagram, assign a coordinate system, and then decompose forces as needed in there. And we had to in here because we had an X and Y dimension in t that we had to uh, apply Newton's second law in order to solve with our two unknowns.